You can watch Mitch Williams on MLB Tonight, MLB Tonight, following tonight's Game 5. Tigers, Red Sox, uh, find MLBnetwork.com for the local channel listings. Hi, Mitch. How are you, buddy? I'm doing good, DP, <laughs> and I, I think he probably should have saved the butt cheese comment for before I came on <laughs> rather than Condoleezza Rice. That's your wheelhouse, butt cheese, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> and the other thing i got to ask you, you seriously have never been fired? No. Wow, you're photo collection must be extensive because I've been invited to leave a lot of places. Well, but you were just cut. You're not really fired. You're released in baseball. No, that's fired. <laughs> How does it happen that you, is it like Bull Durham where they say, uh, hey, Mitch, come on in here. And they close the door. Yeah, pretty much. I, I was called in uh, three times to be released and what are they going to say? I mean, it wasn't like it was a shock. By the end of my career, I really couldn't get small enough on the mound to keep from getting killed. <laughs> uh, I saw Jake Peavy yesterday, last night. Now, he was struggling. I know Granke yeah. didn't have his best stuff. Jake Peavy couldn't find the strike zone. More frustrating when you don't know you don't have good stuff or when you know you can't throw a strike. Oh, trust me, it's when you can't throw a strike. Because then, then you start thinking... What am I doing wrong? Is my arm slot wrong? Am I rushing? Everything's going through your head. And, and then it becomes, I'm either going to throw it harder or I'm going to start throwing darts. And neither one of those are good. Well, let me start with the Dodgers because I, the Cardinals missed a great opportunity because Granke didn't have great stuff. They had opportunities, didn't get to him early. And meanwhile, they had a couple of big hits here. You know, we're, we're big on this momentum. I know going back home, it's 3-2, but I got Kershaw in the on-deck circle here. So, uh, advantage is who? Uh, I don't think there really is an advantage right now. Uh, the way Michael Walker's throwing the ball, I, I think it is going to be an extremely close game. I don't think there's going to be a lot of offense. And, and we're starting to see it in hitters. All there, There's a lot of fatigue right now. Oh, you think that's playing a role here? Oh, absolutely. Hmm. And, and I, I said it at the end of the year when Chris Davis started to struggle. I mean, he, here's a big guy, big, strong guy, and he couldn't catch up to a 90-mile-an-hour fastball in September. And, and that's what you see. You get later into the years, and, and people want to know what the effect of PEDs are, were. That was the effect. You didn't break down. You didn't get fatigued. That was the whole effect to get. At 100 games, your body was shot. So you got 62 more games to put numbers up. There is no fatigue factor. And you're seeing it all over this postseason in the hitting. Okay, but pitching isn't slowing down. Why? Well, obviously, good pitching beats good hitting. And pitchers right now, if you can execute pitches, I mean, Doug Fister demonstrated it last night. Yeah. You ain't got to throw 95. That's true. You have to locate. And as long as you do things properly, mechanically, you can always locate. Talking to Mitch. In, w- unless you're me. Talking to Mitch Williams from the Major League Baseball Network, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. This whole thing about the Dodgers, you know, way of playing and excitement, enthusiasm, celebrating the Cardinals way as we're more professional. Where do you weigh in on uh, what you've seen with this series and celebrate, you know, Gonzalez homering and doing the Mickey Mouse ears thing after he homers? Well, that to me is unnecessary. The, The thing that jumped out at me the most in this series, I have no problem whatsoever with a guy that hits a home run And if he catches it good, he glances at it, and he runs. The other night with Puig, the man is 0 for 11 in the series with seven punch outs, hits a ball that he thinks is a a walk-off home run, throws both hands in the air like I just kicked a field goal from 65 yards, and the ball doesn't even go out of the park. Two things can happen there. Number one, Agon's on second base. If he sees Puig's reaction, he can just take off running. He knows the ball's out of the park. Well, what happens if that ball gets caught and now Beltran's able to double off Agon based on Agon's reaction to Puig's reaction? Hmm. I don't care. I love the fact that Agon, when he hits a double, 
gets to second base, claps his hands, all that. That's all fine. I have no problem with that. It's the throwing up of the hands when you hit a home run, that kind of thing. It's the equivalent of me. He punched out seven times to that point. The equivalent to me would be the pitcher striking him out and then waving him back to the dugout. You just don't do that. Well, Eckersley used to celebrate. He'd point after he struck out somebody. I mean, we, we've seen pitchers That's the do. end of the game. I have no problem. I never celebrated an out that wasn't the last one. It's okay to because do it then? If you do that, to me, you're setting yourself up for failure. But Eckersley, if you look back when he pointed, I will guarantee you it's the last out of the game. What would you do? See, my thought with Puig was that, okay, you're celebrating. I'd worry about your teammates or you next time around. That's where somebody is going to buzz the tower. And and you saw that with Puig, that somebody went, you know, they went, uh, Lynn went after him a little bit there. That would be the only thing I'd worry about. And the Cardinals do it, you know, they're by the book baseball team. So, of course, you got to send a message, I guess, to police the game. Well, I, I can promise you this. The game has changed so much over the last 25 years that all the, the stuff that Puig has done, believe me, the backside of his uniform would have been filthy <laughs> 25 years ago. Would you, what would you have done the next time up if you were facing Puig after he celebrated the triple? After he celebrated the triple? Yeah. He, he would have been knocked down. I'll tell you, I can tell you a story that's a true story. Uh, in Toronto at Old Exhibition Stadium, I got bases loaded in the ninth inning, and George Bell hits a ball that looked like it was going to land on the roof of the football stadium for a walk-off grand slam. I'm walking off the field, and George is still standing at home plate. And I looked at him, and I said, George, why don't you go ahead and run so I don't have to hit you in the neck the next time I face you? <laughs> And that's just how the game was. I never showed up a hitter in my entire career, ever. Didn't believe in it. I never believed in giving anybody any more reason to want to beat you. All right, if I talk to you next week, who's in the World Series? Uh, Tigers and Cardinals. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good to visit with you. We'll be watching tonight. Thanks for joining us, and uh, hopefully we'll talk next week. Uh, you bet, and good luck on your not uh Never getting fired streak. Yeah, and uh, good luck with your butt shoes. Thanks, buddy. All Appreciate right, it. it's Mitch Williams, Major League Baseball Network. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.